Alright guys, so <clears throat> this is a demonstration of the anti-glare um, coating that they say they claim is really, really good. I have to tell you before I show this to you, it's amazing. Uh, what you're going to see in directly in front of you, the Apple logo you see, is the new iMac, the 27-inch model. <clears throat> and to the left is the 2010, late 2010 model, without the anti-glare. So you're going to see a huge difference. This is with the monitors off. So all you're seeing is the glass and the reflective properties of it. So I'm going to show you the 2010 model. You're going to see my reflection like clear as day. All right. So it's like a mirror. You can see me very clearly. I'm zooming in. You can see me holding the camera very clear. All right. I'm going to bring it down and move it over. Look at that. So it's a lot harder to see uh, with it on, with the monitor off. And I have to say, I know this might look like, oh, you can still see yourself in the can, you know, you can still see yourself clearly. Well, I'm going to turn on, I have the uh, exposure up pretty high on this camera. So I'm going to take the setting off and do it in the cinematic mode which takes away the uh, excessive exposure so check this out I'm gonna go back down alright so this is in cinematic mode I'm gonna move over here's the 2010 model alright so as you can see you can still see me clear as day alright now I'm going to go down, move over to the 2012 model that has the coating on it, and there we are. So you can see a humongous difference between the uh, 2012 and the 2010 model. There they are next to each other. So you can obviously see that this one actually has a lot more reflective properties than the one on the right. Now I'm going to turn the exposure back on to show you what the difference is with the exposure uh, a little higher. Alright, so this is with the exposure a little higher, so you can actually see a little bit more clearer. You can obviously see that there are some reflective properties here on the right here, but nothing is clear. I mean, you can actually see my skin tone. It's like a mirror. You you can it is looking like in a mirror. I've never realized looking at my monitor how reflective it actually is until actually looking at this monitor. So that's the new reflective uh, anti-reflective coating, and I have to say what Apple claims is true. It's dramatic. Um, I I am totally sold on it. This is a great example of it, and I hope this uh, proves that Apple did their research, their homework, and it turned out really great. Alright guys, so here's the boot test. This is going to test the speed versus a standard uh, 7200 serial ATA drive versus the new Fusion drive. Now it has a 7200 uh, RPM drive built inside the iMac, but it also is coupled with a 128 gig SSD drive, so the Fusion drive it's called. So this is going to tell you the speed difference between a Fusion drive and the actual standard hard drive. On the left is a 2010 iMac with a 7200 RPM drive. And the one on the left is the new 27 inch iMac with the Fusion drive. Uh, just keep in mind that the 21 and, a half in, 21 and a half inch model for this year, the new 2012 late model, the hard drives are only 5400 RPMs. So there's a good chance possibly that the older generation iMacs will have a faster hard drive because they could actually fit a standard hard drive, a full-size hard drive inside the back of the iMac. When they went to the smaller versions, I guess they had to go to a slower drive, but the 21 and a half inch models come with a slower 5400 RPM drive. To get that faster 7200, you have to step up to the 27 inch iMac. So here we go. I'm going to count down and I'm going to hit the buttons on the back at the same time. So here we go. One, two, three. Thank you. 
So obviously the one on the left, the iMac, already started up. The Apple logo is there. The iMac on the left is uh, not too bad, the 2010 model. Uh, although the 27-inch iMac is done booting up. So that was crazy fast. And the 2010 iMac is still booting up. So you can understand why I chose to upgrade um, the Mac. Even with that login screen coming up, I would have already had Photoshop open, running, and everything like that. So, that's a speed test for the actual uh, hard, the uh, boot up. Let's uh, actually see a speed test for uh, actual software. So let's see. I have two mice here. So let's see. We have uh, Safari, for example. Let's start up Safari. Ready? One, two, three. Alright. Safari opening. Same home page. Let's quit that. Alright. One, two, three. So, as you can see, Safari, not too crazy difference, but you saw in the beginning where there was a lag. This might have been cached, but uh, let's do another one. Let's try, I don't know, Launchpad. Same difference. Let's try System Preferences. Ready? One, two, three. Not too bad. We can try a Photoshop boot. Let's try Photoshop. Here's a Photoshop boot. One, two, three. Done. Done. So there is a performance difference between different programs and uh, how you would use them. Um, but uh, from what I've seen, this computer runs probably to this overall. 20% to 100% faster depending on what I'm doing. Alright, so here's a demo of the speed test of the hard drive uh, transfer rate. So here we go. So as you can see, the test on the right is definitely going around the 300 megabit mark. The iMac on the left is definitely only reading about 100 megabytes. Now it's not horrible for the iMac on the left, but as you can see, I can get things done three times faster, even write speed wise, because the write and read here are the same. The read on here is a lot faster, but still, I mean, this is up in the 400 megabits this is only 300. This means this is four times faster than this. So that is really the performance. It's like four times faster in some cases. And that's a huge, huge advantage to the Fusion Drive because you get the performance of an SSD drive, which is about 80%, 90% like there, because I have a SSD, which I'm going to do another video on, in my MacBook Pro. I have a SSD there that has, it's strictly just SSD, and it has a new SanForce controller, 
so I guarantee you the results are going to be a little different. This is probably going to be a little slower compared to my MacBook. But for this versus this, this is awesome. This is exactly what I wanted to see for the comparison. So let me top stop that. So real quick, I'm just going to show you the screen gap. Now this is a 2010 iMac right here. You can see that there's a gap. Now they say it's a 2 millimeter gap. So you can see the, oops, zoom back out. You can see how the base, and this is the base of the uh, monitor right here. That's that black bezel. You can see the difference in depth. You can see where the screen starts. So you can see that there's a pretty good gap. Now let me move over to the new iMac. There's really no gap. I, I can't even show you. But it's literally glass and screen. It's really a cool effect how they did it. I'm, I'm pretty impressed how they achieved such a uh, how they achieved such a big piece of glass laminating it to the screen. Um, but overall, I mean, it does make the screen seem like it's like part of the glass. Like it's hard to explain. You really need to see this in person to understand it, and you need to be able to compare it to the older gen IMAX versus the new. Any and a camera, I can't tell you. A camera can't show you the uh, the gap. I mean, I'm trying to, but you can see there. I mean, you can see the gap on that edge. So that little black line right there, that's the gap. That's a two millimeter gap they're talking about. So if you try to remember that versus the gap here, there is no gap. This is the twenty. This is the twenty ten iMac. There's just no gap. So there's no gap there, and there's a gap there. So I mean, it, it's hard to explain or show you on a camera, but that's that's what it is. It's it's literally sitting on the glass. It's really cool. So just wanted to let you guys see that as well. All right, guys. So this is a uh, benchmark test, real, real benchmark test. Nothing with numbers or anything. But this is a 2.7 gigabyte video file that I'm going to copy right onto the desktop. So I'm going to hit copy, and now I'm going to paste it somewhere on the desktop. This is 2.75 gigs, and we're going to see how fast the computer can actually copy that file onto the desktop. So one, two, three, go. All right, so 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. This is almost done. Five seconds, done. This is still going, about 10 more seconds. It's a 1.6 gigs, 1.7. Respectively, this is moving at the right speed. It's just a little slower. Done. So you can see the difference. I mean, I literally was sitting here waiting while this machine was still copying. So there's definitely a performance um, increase with the Fusion Drive. So this is an example of the anti-glare, the, uh, the speed test for the transfers. Um, overall, I am very, very pleased and very, very impressed with the performance of this new iMac. This new iMac has the, the Ivy Bridge i7 core, I, uh, I core processor, the top of the line. This has the 2 gigabytes of RAM for the video card, the GTX 680. And that 680 video card has over 1500 CUDA cores. I have a PC uh, machine that I built last year with a NVIDIA GT, GTX 560. TI and that only has 384 CUDA cores. So the, this is actually could be a respectable gaming machine. You could actually play some decent games on this. Um, I do want to test some games to see how they do perform, but uh, overall I think this machine would definitely be worthy opponent opponent for gamers. Uh, this iMac, it's not a bad iMac, but definitely it's a budget budgeted for budget users. This is not a performance machine by no means. At the time, it was okay, but this, this has the performance, and I think people are going to be really, really happy 
with their purchase. So this is the performance update for the new 2012 late model iMac, 27 inch model. Thank you.